excuse me? Can I please interview you for a documentary? Yeah, sure. Okay. What's your name? Tyler Taft. Do you watch live television? I do. Yes. I do. I do. I do here and there, yeah. I tend to watch uh, on streaming platforms. Who do you think is solely responsible for bringing you your favorite TV program? I would say the, the television networks that they're, they're produced on. ESPN. Television companies, big, uh, big names like uh, whoever runs cable. I would say my mom. Actors play a big part of it. What do you think about the broadcast engineer? I'm going to be honest with you. I have no clue who that is. Uh, what exactly is one? No idea what that is. I don't know. No thoughts? Nope. I, I don't know what that is. Absolutely no idea. Most of the time they don't even know you're around. It's one of those things that people don't really know about very much. It's a bankless industry. Hello, my name is Nicholas Huth, and I'm a broadcast engineer in training here at Robert Morris University. Everybody watches television, however, nobody really knows one of the most important roles within the industry. Alongside the three gentlemen you just saw, we're going to try and teach you all about the broadcast engineer, and hopefully by the end of all of this, you have a new appreciation for someone you may not have known actually existed. I am Ian Connolly. I um, I'm a senior, about to graduate in only a couple weeks here at Robert Morris. Um, I mostly have been doing a lot of broadcast engineering with the NCAA events here. My name is Dylan McKenna and I am the event technology manager and broadcast engineer in charge at Robert Morris University. My name is Jim Kepfinger. Um, I am the director of technology and communications for the Township of Moon. I've uh, been at that job for 38 years, um, which includes running Moon Community Access Television. And we work closely with Robert Morris University to cover sports. I spent a lot of time doing IT work, fixing computers, replacing computers, fixing network issues. That's what a television engineer does. Well, the responsibility behind the scenes is just to make sure everything is plugged in. You know, we do a lot of production here, but I feel like the, the real broadcast engineers don't really do very much production work. You know, there's, they are responsible for making sure everything is plugged in, working properly, almost like an IT client relationship. I think the responsibility of a broadcast engineer mostly includes ensuring that all of the different pieces of the puzzle, as I like to say, are in place for a successful broadcaster, a successful production. There's a lot. You know, switchers, replay, graphics, those are the big three, right? Cameras, microphones, audio consoles, making sure all of that stuff is working in the way you need it to. That's really the primary responsibility of a broadcast engineer, in my opinion. Knowledge is king. If you know what you're doing, then the job is not a problem. I like to say there's no panicking in television. Yeah, in the industry as a whole, uh, the job of a television engineer is going, kind of going away. The equipment has become much more simplified, making it a lot easier for people who don't know what they're doing to make things happen, but when they don't work, they don't, they don't have a clue how to fix it. Yes, an engineer's job is kind of underappreciated in that, you know, until they need you, they don't even know you're around. It's one of those things that happens in the background. You could go online right now and find all kinds of stuff, uh, video editing, filmmaking, everything on YouTube, but broadcast engineering, you wouldn't be able to. That's the only thing I really wish I'd, I would be able to have. People passing down, all that kind of stuff, but they're probably too busy doing a broadcast to make a YouTube video. There ain't no credits in television, right? Um, so being the person behind the scenes, um, like I said, it's a thankless industry. You, you know, you don't really get recognized, you just kind of do your job. and. Usually no news is good news in this line of work, right? If nobody comes and talks to you at the end of the day, you probably did a good job. If somebody does come and talk to you, you probably screwed something up. So that's kind of how this uh, job works, I think. As long as everything works fine, everybody thinks I just sit around and smoke cigars, right? But when something goes wrong, then they find out what it is I do. I think that um, the job of somebody who is good at audio and video or, or that does audio and video as a profession, um, I think that job takes a certain skill set and a certain mindset about how to accomplish that kind of a goal. And maybe that's perhaps a skill set and a mindset that not everybody has. Not everybody can, can 
mix a microphone in front of all those people, I suppose. In order to ensure that people sound good, that your in-house production looks good, to ensure that your television production looks good, it takes a lot of preparation and a lot of work um, before that, right? You gotta make sure that your cords are plugged in right, uh, that your microphones are EQ'd correctly. Well, you know, it isn't show up 10 minutes before an event and turn things on and go, right? Uh, this uh, line of work takes preparation, it takes, uh, takes uh, being prepared, uh, to make sure that you have thought of all of the things that could possibly go wrong to the best of your ability and put a plan in place to either make sure that thing doesn't go wrong or what are you going to do if it does. I am currently located in the Robert Morris University Academic Media Center control room where, like Dylan said, us broadcast engineers have to make sure everything works. As you can see, there's an abundance amount of technology here, and everything does something different to make sure our shows at Robert Morris University sound and look the best they can. Let's listen to see what Ian, Dylan, and Jimmy have to say about these technologies. So the technology is, that we use is, is pretty extensive. The entire world of broadcasts is shifting uh, very much from what we call baseband video, which is a copper coaxial cable to IP-based workflows, right? Uh, computers, you know, everything's going over the internet or some kind of ethernet protocol these days. When I first started doing, uh, as I first started working in television, we were still using one inch reel-to-reel -reel tape. Everything was analog, then things evolved. First came three-quarter U-matic tape, then half-inch VHS, then VHS, uh, SVHS, which was Super VHS. Then finally we went to digital tape and we've gone through several forms of digital tape till we finally got to where it really needed to be, which was digital straight to chip, right? Which is where we are today. It all comes down to the, to the broadcast signal flow. You know, you, you start with uh, all your camera sources and then the router so that I, Gotta love the router, you know, especially we, we have the, the truck which doesn't have a router and we're basically fighting over what, what screens get to have a program feed. Uh, the trailer is for non-studio production. Um, it's here on campus for covering a soccer game today. Uh, what's inside is pretty much everything you would see in any regular television studio. Only it's some of the finest equipment that money can buy. I've uh, been very lucky to be able to work for Moon Township. A lot of community television stations cannot afford what we do here. And with all of that said, I could not stop myself from asking for a tour. I would be happy to take you on a tour of the truck. Welcome to uh, Moon Community Access Television's production trailer. Uh, let's start here. This station here, the keyboard's not here, the monitor's not swung around, but this is the graphics station. Um, our graphics is Ross Expression. Graphics operator will sit here using that monitor to get all the graphics package ready to go and feed the right information up for production. We have the Ross Mira, which is the slow motion instant replay. We have four inputs for replay. Uh, it's all digital. It's basically just a TiVo with a lot of controls. Up here are the digital recorders. Uh, that's the Key Pro Ultra and the Key Pro, the old regular Key Pro. Uh, once you get all removable hard drives, everything's recorded to the drives. Over here, we have the Allen & Heath QU16 audio board. What makes this really unique is that it has a remote box that feeds digitally back here. It's like a snake box, all right, that allows you to put in 16 inputs and 8 returns over one piece of Cat5. This is the pride and joy of our production trailer, it's a Ross Carbonite switcher. 24 input switcher, uh, giving us the options to do all kind of amazing stuff. All right, everybody, welcome to Conference Basketball. Yeah. Yeah. Today's a big day, folks, right? So we're not sure about the product on the court, but we know <laughs> that the product on TV is going to be the best damn game in the Horizon League today, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, NKU's pretty good. I heard Wright State step their game up this year too, but we're the best. We know we're the best because we've got this crew right here. All right. So we're past through today. So what we're going to do is we're going to maintain our local break schedule, right? When we need to uh, play those local breaks. If we're not in a local break, 
then we will uh, go to the slash. All right. So we won't just keep playing local breaks. We'll go to the slash if we don't need to play a local break, but we'll maintain that local break schedule otherwise. All right. So today uh, we're going to switch our intro up a little bit. Uh, we're going to do our YSU player to watch. I think Zach made a highlight for the YSU player. And then, yeah, and then we've got our NKU game uh, highlights that our team totally kiboshed. It was awesome. Thanks, so we're going to talk about that. Four yeah. as well. Zach at 12.30 last night on a Friday texted me wondering about highlights, and that's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Delete that part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's going to be an awesome game today. I'm going to hand it over to you. Uh, Cam, we're going to do the same thing as we did before. Uh, with getting the intro stuff. Uh, I think the last couple times I've done it, it was like we got the player just walking away. So I guess we're going to try to like get the person closer. Are we getting the Yeah, okay. yeah, live for the intro. It was just like, oh, they're live, and then they're just walking away. Um, that's how rude. Let's go, guys. We've got a big broadcast today. we got to make sure we get the puck steep. We know what to do. <laughs> big conference matchup. Everybody arm you on two. One, two. Arm you. Although this position seems sort of complex and complicated, as you can see, broadcast engineers have a lot of fun on the job. Ian, Dylan, and Jimmy have a list of stories they'd love to tell, as well as pieces of advice for people interested in the industry. Let's take a listen. My favorite part of my job is watching us work together as a team uh, to produce phenomenal television and phenom phenomenal sports broadcasts. So I absolutely love working with RMU TV. I love working with the students. Uh, and I hope that all of the students that are involved in RMU TV back at the Patrick Henry studio come on over to the event center or come to the television truck and see and operate and work our NCAA Division I broadcasts. The reason why I think that we have a successful program here at Robert Morris with um, you know, good event production and good television production is because we've built a team of people, of students, of alumni, of other employees that know how to work together to achieve a goal. There's so many times where I've had the, the joy of being able to produce a game, uh, something that you know you just get into the routine with. Being able to get into the routine with all your cameras, all the people on the crew, like that's whenever the broadcast really becomes fun. So many times that I've had that it's just fun working the broadcast and you're not even feeling like you're doing anything, you're just pressing the right buttons at the right time, like I always like to say. And if you're a student that's involved in RMU TV or involved in, in media production, I will pay you and feed you to come work these events. And I think it's a great opportunity for all of those students that they should come in and, and give it a shot, see what it's about, work their way up the ranks, and sit at this board for a men's basketball game that 13,000 people are going to watch on ESPN+. I've experienced some fun things and now on that line. We were doing hockey down on the island uh, many years ago when the switcher quit working. Fortunately, I keep a spare of everything. I had another switcher up in the television studio, ran up the hill, got it, replaced it, and we were back on, you know? Um, one of my favorite sayings is, in case of trouble, there's a double. Being able to really live um, that kind of dream of mine, all this stuff I'm really fascinated in, I, it's, I can't explain just how you know, lucky and blessed I am to be here. Uh, there can be a lot to do in this role, um, but you know, it's, it's worth it at the end of the day. I'll just leave you with that piece of advice that I give to anyone who's going to take a career in communications. Make sure you love it. Make sure you love it because you will put a lot of time and effort in and oftentimes it goes unnoticed and it certainly goes undercompensated. So, um, but if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Noticed, and it certainly goes undercompensated. So, um, but if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. So now, what do you think about the broadcast engineer? You know, I, I think they're really underappreciated in their role. I think broadcast engineers are kind of like looked down upon only because like we we only see like like the 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 film and the TV show, just everything kind of black and white. I feel like they're underappreciated uh, then. They're geniuses. They do so much, and they just don't get enough recognition. Thank you so much.